order uh, this uh, meeting of the Hadley Housing Authority annual plan. Today is Tuesday, July the 23rd. It's 11.24 a.m. Our first order of business uh, will be for uh, Pamela to introduce the 2024 fiscal year annual plan for Hadley Housing Authority. Thank Take you. it away. Yeah. Thank you. So I have a brief slideshow for you today. Um, I'm going over some of the key components of the annual plan. And then has everyone met John Williams? No. Hi, John. So John Williams is our director of facilities. And then Marie Smith Free, Sue Oppenheimer, Hi. and Richard Rickles, too. So he, uh, John, oversees uh, maintenance and capital projects for us and procurement. So, um, all right. Uh, the annual plan is intended to provide insight into the authority's operations and plans for the fiscal year. And as you all know, our fiscal year is October 1st to September 30th. So this is the fiscal, uh, the annual plan for fiscal year 25. Um, the annual plan uh, is a uh, component of, the components of the annual plan is the proposed capital improvement plan, which is the five-year plan, the proposed maintenance and repair plan, the current operating budget, the responses to the performance management review finding, uh, list of housing authority policies, list of waivers from governing agencies of EHOLC, and other elements to include tenant satisfaction survey. So in the past, you know, we've all done the, um, we've done the five-year plan, uh, capital plan, outside of the annual plan, and I think this is the third year that we've been doing the annual plans, uh, so they, they're approved in conjunction. The budget that is in the annual plan is the one that we're currently in. So it's not the actual fiscal 25 budget, there was some confusion in the where we yeah, I do. Uh, a couple years ago. Um, it, it's what we currently have approved, because we don't have the new one there, too. The annual plan, when uh, myself and John put that together, we worked with Beth Thompson from Cyber Securities, or she's cut some cyber trainings, excuse me, through EOHLC. And it's a program that we go into that is um, it, the proprietary program of the executive office. And it pulls the different components um, of the plan in from other software from the executive office. So the capital plan comes from the capital uh, SIMS, right? It's uh, SIMS. Uh, some of our budget comes from the HAFIS system. So it's grabbing these things and, and putting it into the plan. It's a template <coughs> that all housing authorities follow. Um, our, our developments that we have in uh, Hadley are 705 the Burke Bay Apartments. There are uh, six buildings. And then in um, building with 12 units, so I'm going to cut off just a bit. The 667 is the Golden Court Apartments with um, nine buildings and 40 units for a total of 52 housing units. So uh, the local housing authorities receive their yearly funds from EOHLC, a uh, formula of funding which they target to the most urgent capital needs in the CIP. The first three years of the CRP are based on actual awards made to the LHA, while years four and five are based on estimated planning amounts, not actual awards. So this is, uh, I, I want you, um, if you have the plan in front of you, you might be able to see it a little bit better. So this <coughs> is what is in the annual plan for our current balance of our formula funding. There's $455,537.24 is the balance that we that we have coming over. And then we have new awards of $348,699,051. And this is for th a three-year period. And then total funds and plan spending is $898,542.16. 
uh, we're going to have um, some slides coming up showing the operating budget that is currently in place. So if the, I've just highlighted a couple of the, the line items. The 3110 is the shelter rent. So that's the rent that we get from the actual residents. Um, and it, as you all know, um, our residents pay 30% of their income with some deductions for medical and for disability or working. There's a couple of uh, discounts that they get. And then the bottom um, is showing you the total revenue because we do get the operating subsidy. I'm sorry, I didn't highlight that. That's a 3801. Um, and that went up 32 percent. That's really so. The total revenue was 395,947. Excuse me. I'm sorry. 420,553 dollars is our revenue. What we have coming in. Uh, this is uh, some of the expense lines, which you folks see this on a, on yeah. a monthly basis when we bring in the financials. And then the expenses, the approved budget we have is four hundred thirty-nine thousand and fifty-three dollars. So we are we did budget over we did budget over expenses this um, and a deficit this year, uh, which was approved by the uh, EOHLC. There is some talk about budget augmentation coming up from EOHLC. So what that means is. If when your reserves fall or if your budget is in a de deficit, they'll give you additional subsidy. So we're kind of hoping that's going to happen too, so yeah. we don't have to dip into the reserves. Uh, but the expenses did go up because everything is going up. Um, contract cap costs are going up. Projects are, are really coming in over budget. Um, so we're hoping for that budget augmentation. This is a, a snapshot, and I'm sorry, it is blurry, of the performance management review that we had and any findings, um, or if there were no findings. So it had, like, we did have uh, just a few findings. Um, so it was, uh, so tenant accounts receivable was um, needed, we got a rating of operational values, and, or excuse me, corrective action. So the housing authority, um, work diligently to collect TAR up to and including court proceedings. Due to a backlog of cases in housing court, it took longer than expected to evict um, tenants that owed rent. Um, we were also successful in getting pay, uh, tenants into repayment agreements when possible. Um, which did protect their uh, tenancy. Certifications and reporting submissions, um, timely submission of statements and uh, certifications. There was operational guidance. Uh, and as you all recall, there was a, an issue with some of the prior board not approving financials and quarterly reports when needed. And we got deep on the audit for that. Um, they, we also got some um, operational guidance for or board meeting board member of training. So um, and it is a dig, and it's 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 a minor dig, but it happened. Uh, as you all know, too, they so they changed the system from the UMass system to an NSTAR system. Track and start. Track start. Track start system. Um, and there is a there's a glitch there too. So I, I have been working with EOHLC to find out why some of the people like um, Ms. Oppenheimer took the training but it's not showing up that it didn't come over. Um, but for the three agencies that we manage, looking at the track start, they were all incorrect. Um, so so we, we have sent out new invitations um, and I'm hearing not only from Ms. Oppenheimer but from other members of the board here and at other housing authorities, they're not receiving those emails. So some, there's some kind of glitch and we're, we are working through that. When a new board member um, joins, uh, Ms. Jackson just joined, it, it does take a cycle of two board meetings to get that in her email into the system. So that's another pain point too. But yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Um, and then for the rest of the PMR, financial capital champ, 
facilities and management, vacancy turnover, preventative maintenance, work order systems, there were no findings. We were working as direct we were, okay, for those regulations. This is a copy of our all the policies that we just, or the, the list of all policies that we have and the dates they were implemented. Um, this does not include the new ones that were just approved or that we're working on. Um, and they will be updated in next year's annual plan. Uh, the Housing Authority has no current waivers. This waiver is different than um, when we get a waiver for a vacancy. So this waiver would be um, if we request from the Executive Office a change in policy. So it is something that we're, we're trying to put together um, under the Amherst Housing Authority is a waiver of tenant input on hiring. Um, and that's under a direction with our employment lawyer too. So we're, th that would be a way of way we're finding. There would be some participation, but not actual in the interview. But that's, that's an important. So the, the resident surveys, um, if you recall in the past, we had a good breakdown of what the residents thought and the questions that they would ask. Um, there is nothing new that's been published. Um, from the executive office, so we don't have anything. To, so the surveys are supposedly going out, but I have no data on them. Okay. We haven't reported on it. Hi. That was it. Are there any questions? Could we get a? a I would like a copy of the annual plan, the full thing. And uh, Crystal Jackson would like one as well. She did contact us, yeah, so we have a printed copy for her. Okay. Yeah. So, so you folks do need to approve today the, um, the annual plan and the annual capital plan in two separate okay. motions. Okay. So uh, I move that we approve the uh, annual plan. Can I get a second? No, second. Okay. Any discussion? No discussion. Vote. No discussion. Aye. Vote. So, Rich? Uh, In Sue, favor. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sue? Yes. Risa Smith Green? Yes. So, that's a unanimous three to zero. That's a quorum. And I move that we approve uh, the capital plan as presented. Second. Uh, Rich seconds. Now, roll call vote. Rich? Yes. yes. Sue Oppenheimer? Yes. Risa Smith Green? Yes. So that motion carries. Both of your both of the plans are approved for Hadley Housing Authority. Perfect. That's all we have. All right, our meeting then I will uh, call for adjournment. Can I get a motion? Motion. Thank you. Rich, that's all done. Rich motions <laughs> to adjourn. Can I get a second? Second. Sue Oppenheimer seconds. Uh, can I get a vote? Yes. It is unanimous. Three zero. The meeting is adjourned.